Healing Whiskey Single Pot Still versus their Single Cask Armagnac Cask for KWM. What are these like and should you be looking out for these? Stay tuned for the Whiskey Whistle. Hey, my whiskey people, and hello to the Teeling Whiskey Society. This is Mark Kaufman for Whiskey Whistle on YouTube, sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winnipeg, the center of North America, bringing you a two-up of Teeling. We have Teeling Single Pot Still, one of their new, now standard, releases. So now they've got five. They've got a, uh, a quintuplet of, uh, of standard releases. This joins the single grain the small batch, the single malt, and also black pits for their standard lineup. Let's get that poured. Single pot still, if you're not familiar, this is distilled in a pot still in one distillery. That's why it's called single. And this is a mix of malted as well as unmalted barley. And I just wrecked that. I spilt it everywhere. Oh, well. Okay. All right, so that is uh, a, a very interesting looking whiskey. It's very light in color and it's 46% ABV and unchill filtered. I believe it's natural in color as well, but they don't mention that on, uh, all they say is it's natural character. Hopefully that means natural in color. Okay, and then we have a single cask. There are lots of teeling single casks out there. This is one that was bottled for Canada for Kensington Wine Market. And I don't think they have any of these left, but um, uh, a very interesting bottle. It is 58.4% ABV and a 750 milliliter bottle. So uh, you're getting a cask strength, you're getting a little bit extra volume. Um, this one is finished in a an Armagnac cask, so that's kind of cool. Let's get that open. Oh. Oh, <laughs> okay. And a uh, quick shout out to my friend Andrew over at Kensington Wine Market. Great selection for this one. And it's refreshing to see a difference in color. And that again reinforces my thought that this is probably natural in color. But uh, I think the term um, natural char character is slightly um, ambiguous and should be maybe reconsidered or at least put something on the back label to reassure your uh, your your clients um, that this is uh, the real deal here. This is the clean, the perfect, the unadulterated whiskey. Okay, so first of all, let's compare the color here. Now, I should say this really isn't a versus. We have a single pot still. We have a single malt, but they're both teeling. This one is from the distillery, the new distillery in Dublin. This one is um, likely sourced and probably from tea, from uh, from Cooley Distillery. It could also be from Bushmills. There's a bit of uh, discussion, debate as to whether that's Cooley or whether it is Bushmills. Okay, color here. We have a nice lemon light uh, light color here for the pot still, single pot still. And something much more copper-like, um, golden, 24 karat gold. Uh, not quite the color of the pot still that's right next to me here, but um, uh, definitely darker than uh, than gold. And this one here, we've got something, I don't know, is it 10K gold or something like that? 12, 14 karat gold. Okay, now let's check out the legs here. Okay, so what do we see for legs? The single pot still came out first. The single cask Armagnac finish uh, following. Secondary legs have begun for the pot still and they're just starting now for the Armagnac cask finish. Definitely some heady legs here. So we should have something that is heady in mouthfeel as well. Mouthfeel, pardon me. Okay, so let's check out the single pot still first. 
and then we'll move into the single cask. We'll check out the nose, the palate, and the finish. Neat with water as well. And then give each of them a Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score. Before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe to Whiskey Whistle. Okay, make sure you subscribe to the channel and join the 20% of you that are subscribed to Whiskey Whistle. And then hit the bell as well, ding ding, so that you're notified of future whiskey, uh, future whiskey whistles. Pardon me. Uh, that'll give you uh, a heads up when new content comes out. And if you're enjoying Whiskey Whistle, I gotta set these down here. If you're enjoying Whiskey Whistle, then come and join me and a select group of uh, Whiskey Whistle fans and supporters on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Whiskey Whistle, and join the Whiskey Whistle crew. With a little bit of support, you'll get your name in the credits at the end of each video. You'll also get advanced viewing of future Whiskey Whistles. Last but not least, with enough support, you'll get yourself your own Whiskey Whistle glass. So hopefully we will see you there. All right, so the single pot's still here. Super fragrant. There is something so different about single pot still. And there is also something so different about teeling, the teeling single pot still. It's very fruity. It's also got some minty, deep kind of uh, spicy flavors going on there. And uh, let me just look at this here. They used to put the finish on here. I don't see anything about the finish of this one. Uh, so this bottle, this our single pot with still whiskey, was crafted using a recipe of 50% unmalted spring barley and 50% malted barley, which was triple distilled and matured in hand-selected casks until we say it's ready. So no mention as to exactly what kind of casks and I picked that up in South Korea and I paid quite a lot for it. Um, what did I pay? It's on there somewhere. I think I, maybe I pulled it off. I think it was 110 uh, US. So a lot more than uh, would be the retail price here in Canada. But we've got fresh prune, fresh uh, plums, pardon me. We have very ripe orchard apples a little bit of apple cider vinegar spices we've got a little bit of um a little bit of paprika added to some sweet spices so it's got a very eastern very eclectic very exotic kind of a nose to it and you might think that you're smelling say single malt Indian whiskey what an engaging nose okay let's check out the palette for this cheers folks and cheers to everybody at the Teeling Whiskey Society that is uh, that's one of my babies started four years ago on on, uh, on 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 Facebook. Pardon me. Now on Twitter. So uh, at Teeling Whiskey Society, check that out. And if you like Teeling, it'd be great to see you and your photos and your comments and all your thoughts about Teeling there. Okay. Cheers. And following through from the nose. Something very exotic here. And for a second there, my palate was, was shifted to the outdoors to a place like Arizona where you have very fragrant, um, you know, bizarre desert-like trees and... Uh, um, what are those prickly things called? Cactuses. There we go. And then you have something very um, minerally. 
like all of the um, all of the rock that surrounds everywhere in the sand. Some definitely some some unmalted barley spice kicking in there, which is not unlike rye here in Canada. It's got a little bit more punch to it than single malt, than uh, than than barley malt. There's a mintiness, there's a herbalness, and yet it's very sweet. And this is probably what four or five years old, maybe six years old at the at the upper limit, and it's it's really really well matured. It's definitely not an immature whiskey, which you find a lot. There's a lot of new distilleries that are putting out whiskey of this age and bottling it, and it's just not ready yet. But this is totally ready and it's totally enjoyable. And I think it's one of my favorite teeling from that uh, that group of five basic teeling whiskeys. Juicy, and yet at the same time, it's astringent. It is fruity and herbal. Very exotic and really, really enjoyable. Uh, probably one of the more complex, unusual, delicious, new single pot still whiskeys coming out of uh, out of um, Ireland. Okay, let's add a little bit of water here. Not too much. Give that a bit of a shake. Just for fun, I want to whiff, whiff this for one second. Ooh, buttery. Wow, creamy. Creamy, I think, is a term that uh, fits teeling well. Okay, so with water added, we still have all the spices, all the fruit, some fresh plum, that orchard apple, some really, really sweet um, pears coming through. Some dragon fruit as well. And a light little bit of, a light little bit of um, papaya as well. So that's that tropical edge here. Mm. with water its mineral edginess has kind of diminished ramped up fruit here bizarre fruits a bit of guava a little bit of passion fruit in there Adding that zingy spiciness to it. Again, it's it's still very much reminding me a lot of uh, Paul John and uh, uh, Rampur, Rampur Indian Indian single malts. Not so much um, uh, Amrut. Not so much Amrut. Hmm. And then the finish here with water. Very long, very fruity, bit a bit spicy, a tiny little bit of uh, of um interesting astringent fruitiness. Tropical fruits there. I mean, it's really really impressive that this is as young as it is and yet as mature as it is which is just fantastic and if you see this it is buy on site and i will again for multiple reviews here in a row give this a preemptive 
Irish malt hug. Irish, pardon me, Irish barley hug. Mm, 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 mm. One more. Oh, yes. And a nice kiss on the Teeling Logo Phoenix. Mwah. So, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Teeling Single Pot Still. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 92 out of 100. You heard it. 92 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Teeling. Uh, Teeling Single Pot Still. And according to the price, I paid a great price for this. According to its age, it was expensive. According to its strength, it was expensive. But for what you're getting in terms of the experience, it's well worth the money for sure. So uh, that's great. And if you've tried the pot, the single pot still, or any of the uh, the single cask single pot stills, please leave me a comment and uh, share some thoughts with me. 92 points for that one. Definitely something you should check out. And if you're a single malt lover and you've tried some single pot stills and you haven't really been on board with it, you'll be on board with this for sure. Hmm. Okay. So on to the KWM single cask, the Armagnac finish. Let's check the nose out together. Super creamy, super sweet, lots of vanilla. Lots of sweet fruits, um, stewed fruit, stewed apple, canned sweet pear, some canned peaches. But oh, it's just so custardy and creamy. Oh, no wonder that Andrew picked this out. And I hope that, you know, whether this, if, maybe this was a soft seller, and I think it was, but I think, I think the Teeling Fever is going to hit Canada too. And Andrew, if you can get in the single pot still, uh, put some pressure on Bacardi, um, who handles distribution here in Canada, I believe. Um, please do so because I think I think we need this. You need this, and you're gonna love it. And we need more of these single uh, single casks, more of them. All right, so creamy, and then an interesting, very light, delicate fruit, which is. Kind of like prickly pear. And yet also kind of like uh, the dragon fruit again. And then there's a, a graham cracker here. Just your standard honey graham cracker. But again, a really interesting, engaging nose. And let's see if the palate follows up with that. Cheers, folks. Cheers, Andrew. Cheers, KWM. Mmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> The nose does a terrible job of preparing you for the palate, which is ultra fruity, super bright, um, clearly the, the standard cask here was a bourbon cask, and that bourbon cask was very fresh and zingy, and then you got this fruity kind of, uh, whatever, from the Armagnac cask that, uh, Brandy, right? It's a brandy um, in in French oak. But altogether, uh, my whole face is feeling flush, and I don't know if it's visible. But um, what a what a different, unique experience here! Wow. So 
super fruity. Again, we've got uh, the prickly pear. We've got the um, some lychee, lots of lychee here. Mangosteen. That just a very different fruit, dragon fruit. Some really um, interesting limes. What are those limes? Those very, very sweet and yet very um, sharply flavored limes. What are they called again? It's gone. All of the bartenders will know, and if you are, you know what I'm talking about. It's total sweet lime, lime cordial, roses, lime cordial coming through there. Okay, we need some water added here. And I gotta say that some of these bottles, and by these, I mean these single casks, mid-aged, age 15, 17, whatever years, and they've got a neat finish on them. You've gotta give them time in the bottle. You cannot just, you know, pour the neck pour and then say, oh, I don't like it. You have to just, just uh, let that neck pour, let, you know, let it sit for half an hour minimum. And then try it later that night. And um, maybe leave the, the cap open, you know, take the cap off, leave that open for um, a couple hours. Okay. And, uh, and then you know, let, let that sit for a while. And funnily, like I have this 15 year old in my uh, little um, flask as well. And I'm gonna pour this. Where am I gonna pour it? Let's pour it into this guy. Hmm, that's done pretty well in there. Uh, stainless is better than pewter for these types of flasks, okay? But um, yeah, let them sit for a long time, a month, two months, three months, which for me as a whiskey content creator is counterproductive because I have now uh, missed probably 80% of the buyers of this bottle that have since drunk it and moved on to the next. But, uh, you know, if that's you, I got to suggest you got to just hang on to that. Um, get some bottles like that, uh, like that naked malt, get a teeling small batch, hang on to that, hang on to that good cask, drink some of the lesser expensive stuff, let that bottle do its thing so that it's at its best for you. And this for me is phenomenal. Okay, so the nose with water added. It's still very creamy. And it's very much unlike a lot of other Irish single malts. You don't get that, um, that signature vegetal note. I don't know. Maybe this is Bushmills. It's just so dessert-like. But a dessert for adults. One that has, you know, like lavender, whatever, dust. And um, pink peppercorn um, essence. ground up poppy seeds mm. with water this as well really takes you back to a different style of whiskey 
from ages ago. And I'm guessing that's what probably drew Andrew from KWM to pick this up. It is piquant. It is tart. It's got so many flavors in there. It's so complex. And the Armagnac was really just a little bit of a coat. A little coat of Armagnac. They did not need that Armagnac finish. It would have been A-OK -okay on its own. But what it did do was it added some, some oomph to the nose. But the problem is, again, that nose just does not prepare you for the palate here. Hmm. Super enjoyable. Delicious, spicy, fruity, bizarre. Wonderful finish here. And that is definitely... It's geared for the enthusiast or uh, the advanced whiskey lover. If you're a, a new to single malt whiskey or whiskey in general, you'll enjoy it. But I don't think that um, I don't think you get enough out of it just to 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 uh, justify uh, the price, which I guess would have been I don't know 170 ish or whatever. I could be wrong here. Um, but that being said, if you are in uh, the beginning phase of your whiskey journey and you see a bottle like a Teeling single cask and you hear from people that it's really good, then I would say maybe it's a good idea to get one. Try it and then put it aside, whether that's for a year or two or three. The whiskey is going to just be just fantastic. And um, I think you'll approach it with the right type of uh, the right type of approach, the right type of of uh, back backstory, the right type of back history of all the whiskeys you've tried since then. And then you'll come at this and you'll say, "Holy shit! I had no idea it was this good when I bought it." <laughs> what a great night of! Uh, getting back into whiskey reviews. These are super long though, and I'm gonna have to do a crazy amount of editing. But um, let's get into the whiskey whistle whiskey score for the Teeling Armagnac cask. And oh, it, it needs it. It needs a single malt, a malt hug, mm, 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 mm. and a little kiss, a malt kiss to the Phoenix. And it needs a little bit of a idolization. Uh, you know, and I got to put it here. It's right there. It's on my shirt. It's on this little glass. It's back there, over there. It's up there. I don't know if you can see all that, but I got teeling all around. Um, and uh, keep it up to the teeling distillery. Keep doing what you're doing, doing what you do. Focus on your distillery because this is, this is, this is crazy good. But anyway, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score, we forgot about that. The Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for the Teeling Irish Whiskey 15 year old Armagnac cask for KWM. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 93 out of 100. You heard it 93 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Teeling KWM Armagnac cask finish from 2021. If they still have it, you got to get it. And if they don't, I'm sorry, but they'll have another great cask soon. So keep watching and uh, tell Andrew to get more in, okay? And tell him to get the single pot still. Bacardi, if you're watching, I don't know. You, ah, you're not, you're not doing teeling right here in Canada. Let's go. Let's get this started, okay? All right. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, folks. Again, my name is Mark Kaufman. You're watching Whiskey Whistle. Subscribe to the channel. Check me out on Patreon. And we will see you for the next one. Goodbye now.